Hello and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I wanted to briefly go through how to get set up with VS Code for Java work. Later on we can build on this and see some advanced tips and tricks. But today it's just going to be the basics and I try to keep this very short and sweet. Let's get started. I'm going to drop some links in the description section. First of all, uh, there is uh, VS Code comes with uh, quite nice uh, instructions for any language. So for Java, um, you could just go here and read the documentation. However, I will briefly show you the important parts so you don't need to. And additionally, some parts might need some interpretation or there might be multiple choices. Also going to cover some of these. But uh, here is the first link, visualstudio.com uh, slash docs, languages and Java. And uh, two ways to get started. Option one would be to get the coding pack for Windows or Mac OS or something else. Um, coding pack contains VS Code and Java Development Kit and a collection of suggested extensions. So it's pretty good way to get started. Um, but I very often install VS Code separately. So I'm going to show you option two, which is the Java extension pack way. Um, in my case, what I appreciate most about VS Code is that it's a general purpose tool. So it's not specific to any specific language. I can, I can rapidly do different things with it. So that's pretty good. It's also rather lightweight still, especially if you are a bit conservative on which extensions you are going to install. So the flexibility is a bonus and therefore I typically get VS Code and then install what I need. So Java extension pack comes with uh, some pretty good extensions. It's a combination of them. The extensions have uh, extra details behind them. I'm not going to cover all of that. But for example, this is quite centric language support for Java by Red Hat. So if you open that up, there's a lot more details you can kind of use. A lot more details for your benefit. Okay, but I just wanted to show you the simplest way in this uh, setup. So let's do that. In my case, I have a Windows subsystem for Linux installed. So I typically run my VS code from here. As I said, I'm presuming you have installed VS code. There is many different ways to do that. So not going to go into that here today yet. Just going to show you what to do once you have VS code. Okay. By the way, I do have some other videos on how to automate your VS Code installation. I'm going to drop the links to them as well in the description section. Okay. So uh, extensions in VS Code are here. And uh, I think my first problem when I started with VS Code was the amount of extensions available. There is a lot of them, but there's three groups for me because I'm using Windows Subsystem for Linux. And the last one is recommended. So that's already pretty good place to start. We, get, we got the Java extension pack here. Another option would be to just say Java and see what pops up. As I said, I was having problem with the amount here, but if you just get the Java extension pack, it's, it's a pa package deal. So you get a lot with it. You get all the essentials in place with it. So I'm going to do that, install it takes a little bit of time. We are downloading stuff from the internet. Uh, sometimes you need to restart VS Code. And if you want to be on the safe side, uh, <clears throat> you can always do it. Uh, it's not requiring me to reboot right now, but I'm still doing it because I'm uh, superstitious. What can we do with the extension pack? Well, first thing is that you can create edit Java files. I have a very simple uh, you can see that I'm already getting some IntelliSense going here. Okay. So I have my class and I have the main function. By the way, this is quite typical benefit in pretty much all the IDs that I've been using recently. So you are able to write a macro. In my case, I wrote main. Do you remember that mantra public static void main? You can just do this. So you, you type main, you choose the macro and you have a, your uh, hello world main function created. 
Same thing with system out print line or system error. Using shortcuts like these, you really don't need to write so much code. The code will pretty much write itself. You can also see the run and debug here. So run. Surprise, surprise, will run your code in the terminal and it seems to be working. Debug, same thing with the debugger. So you can set breakpoints and watches and all, the, all that good stuff. Not going to go into detail there. You can additionally get extra extensions for setting up things like Maven and Spring Boot. But again, I have other videos on that. So I'm not going to dive into that today. What I am going to dive into is one last thing, because as I said, this is very basic getting started level of things. So the last thing I wanted to show is that there's this magic button, Control Shift P, and uh, that's something you should remember. Of course, if you're running this on other platforms, the combination of keys will vary, but let's do Control Shift P. And if you say Java, you can find after installing the extension, there's a lot of things you can already do, and a lot of that power is in this Control Shift P menu. And uh, one thing you might need to do or might not need to do is configuring Java runtime. So I didn't cover installation of Java. Again, I have other videos on that. In my case, I have multiple Java versions already installed and default Java and the Windows subsystem for Linux kind of picks up my uh, Java version immediately from the uh, surroundings. But if I wanted to or needed to do something else, well, you can uh, download Java variants. You can get different uh, brands of Java, different versions. You can download them, set them up manually. Or if you have multiple ones, you can also go to Java Tooling Runtime, install JDK's menu. Or you can go to Settings. This is all also covered in the extensions. But there's the User Settings place, File Preferences, Settings. And you can edit the JSON file be beyond. So I have some settings here, but these are not applying because I'm using that Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'm getting cannot be applied in this window, will be applied when you open it locally. However, you can see that you could define multiple runtimes. You just set up the paths here. I have version 8, version 16, and then I my default Java is current. So I'm not really using these right now, but depending on your situation, you might. Okay, almost at the end here, um, as I said, the documentation contains even more, and uh, I am probably going to do some tips and tricks kind of video later uh, on some specific topics on what you can do on top of that, and some power tips like what you saw me do with the macros there, because they will really make you a lot faster if, if you are using them as as opposed to if you are using this just as a text editor and not benefiting of the extensions and tools at all. So I, I really enjoy automation as you probably know if you have watched my channel and I like to have my tools do as much of the boring manual work for me as possible. So probably we'll dive into that but meanwhile um, I hope this one was useful for you and I really would appreciate if you click those uh, buttons there to show me if, if you get some kind of use from these videos. And even more importantly, there's the comments section. So you can use that to ask some more questions or give me suggestions on the upcoming topics. Or if you are yourself a VS Code master and I just did something very stupid, uh, let me know, please, because that, that way I can grow as well. Um, this approach has always got me started, so it's been working for me, but doesn't mean it's the best way to do things. But it's an okay way to do things, so we can get started, and then we can build more on top of this. So let me know in the comment section if there is something specific you would like to see in the upcoming content. And otherwise, see you in the next video. Bye-bye.